All right, what's going on, Yadani? So here's another one, a uh, hydrostatic submerged surface problem. It reads, the closed vessel contains water with an air pressure of 10 PSI at the water surface. One side of the vessel contains a spout that is closed by a six inch diameter circular gate that is hinged along one side. The horizontal axis of the hinge is located 10 feet below the water surface. Determine the minimum torque that must be applied at the hinge to hold the gate shut. Neglect the weight of the gate and friction at the hinge. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, so first step, right? Knowns, we got it here. We're dealing with water, so um that is in feet and inches so that is 62.4 pound per feet cubed and again right from other videos that is also 0 0.0361 pound per inch cubed that's just converting right there um we know the pressure at the very top is 10 psi so what that means is, hold on, this pressure right here, it's acting everywhere, right here, right here, uh, right here, right here. So it's pretty much all around, right here. Just um, that's how you read those pressures. And this pressure here is the same as this pressure here. Just um, something to um, keep a lookout on um so next step right we got those two right there the um this is a three four five triangle right they tell us right here so this is six inches let's go ahead and do that using this angle theta so sine um sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse so that is three over five and sine theta is also equal to the angle here, right? Opposite, we want this height right here, and we want this right here. So sine theta is opposite over 6, right? X over 6. And if you set these two equal to each other, you'll get X is equal to... What is that? 3.6. So there's a 3.6 right here. I'll put an X. Now to get the Y one right here, you just do cosine instead. So cosine theta is equal to 4 over 5. Right? 4 over 5. These two, because you didn't see it. And then it's also equal to, cosine theta is equal to Y over 6. So set these two equal to each other. Y is equal to 4.8. All right, so we got these distances right here. Let's go ahead and start the free body diagram. I didn't put the rest of the problem, just FYI, because I needed space. But it's pretty much just finding the torque at this point right here. So there's pressure here and what torque is needed to keep the gate shut. So that's what's happening there. We got free body diagram um so this is what it looks like right it's kind of uh, like this make it a little bit bigger that's the gate right let's shade that in so that's the gate it's gonna go up diagonally so let me switch the paper around just to get a better drawing okay let's go a little bit higher right there and that straight line this is a surface so that's kind of what's going on right there okay um we know what do we know we know this is 10 feet so from this point right this is 10 feet what else do we know we know it's a three four five triangle right so this is going to be theta and this side is three this side's four, right? Because the three's vertical. So that's how we know this one's three, this one's four. 
And obviously this is a five right here, three, four, five. What else? So using the relationship here, we could also find this distance, the dashed line. So sine theta, right, was equal to three over five. Sine theta is equal to three over five. Sine theta is also equal to, this is a 10 right here. Sine theta is equal to 10 over some distance. 10 over our hypotenuse, this one right here, up to this point. Um, let's go ahead and label that from here to here. What is that distance? We're about to find out. Um, sine theta is equal, uh, let's just put, I don't even know what to call it. Um, some number, right? In this case, let's just put C or whatever. C. Set them equal to each other. 3 over 5 is equal to 10 over C. C is this distance right here. If you do the math, you should get, let's flip it. Okay, you know what, 50, 3 divided by 50, she gets 16.7, 16.67, double check that, that should be good, okay, let's put 16.67, all right, um, now, yeah, it is, because 50 divided by 3, and C is over here. So that should be 16.67. Um, cool, so we should be good. Um, oh, actually, the forces, right? So there's two forces, one due to water and one due to 10 PSI. And like I said, 10 PSI is acting all around, so that acts as a... Well, you know what? Let me not get too ahead of myself. There's two forces, F1... That's due to the 10 PSI. F2 is due to water, just water being water. So let's go ahead and do one of them. All right, so let's do F2. Just, this is F2, just water being water. F2 is equal to pressure times area, we know that. And that is equal to gamma height times area. Um, Okay, another thing that doesn't mention, well, in my case, because I didn't print it out, right? But there's a circle. It's a, it's a circular gate, look, as a diameter. So just keep that in mind, it's not a square. Um, so the area is gonna be pi r squared here. We know that, and then um, to make things easier, everything's in inches, just FYI. So 0 0.0361, right? times your height so the height i get like i said it's the vertical height from the surface to the very center here now we know this distance is 10 from here to here if you find this distance you could just add them and then divide by two to get the average or in this case we know this thing is 16.67 feet um convert that to inches so let me actually write that down here feet convert that to inches and then add three more inches because we want halfway. Oh, actually, no, I'm sorry. We don't do the diagonal. We're doing vertical. So we get x over 2. Does that make sense? Let me start all over. So I'm lying. You don't use 16.67 for this one. This one's the vertical height only. So it's 10 feet plus x over 2, halfway. x is 3.6. 10 feet is 120 inches. So it's 120 inches plus half of this. Half of this is 1.8, so it's 121.8 inches. Again, check the math. This is 10 feet, 120 inches, right? This vertical distance is 3.6, and we want half of that vertical distance, so that's 1.8. 1 1.8 plus 120 inches, 121.8. Times your area, pi r squared if you do this you'll get f of 2 is equal to 124.32 pounds so this is the force due to water so we got this one cool 
Now let's go ahead and do the other one. So F1, same thing, pressure times area. In this case, we have the pressure. It's 10 PSI, pound per square inch. Um, and then, uh, so let me explain this. I'll write it down. That's 10 PSI times pi r squared. And if you do the math here, you'll get F1 is equal to 282.74. Not sure if you can see that, but there you go. Pounds. 282.74. Now, let me kind of show you what's going on with this one. Whenever you have a 10 PSI that's acting all around the tank, it's kind of like this. So this is the gate. I'm going to redraw the gate like that. It's a distributed load, right? It's acting 10 psi every single uh, every single point, pretty much. Um, so if it's acting 10 pounds for every square inch, um, and you multiply it by your area, at the end of the day, you get this number, right? But it's acting at the very center. I think I mentioned it in the other video, when you do distributed loads at a perfect linear surface like this, it's a, you could combine the whole distributed load into one single force. There you go. So that's kind of what's happening. It's 282 at the very center. At the very center, it's three inches, right? Three inches in, right here. Um, so we already have Y1, just like that. Y1 is, let me go ahead and write it down so you won't get confused. Y1, actually, you know what? Hold on. Force 1 acts directly on center of gate. There you go. Cool. So, we gotta find pretty much Y1. Well, we know it acts directly on the center, so we're not gonna do the formula. But, um, again, when you find Y1, you want the distance along this surface, in this case it's at an angle, all the way up to the surface. So that distance halfway is 16.67 plus three inches, because the gate is six inches, you want the halfway mark. So convert this to, to inches right here, 16.67. Um, and then if you add three inches, I think this is 200 inches even. So if you add um, three more inches, you get Y1 is equal to 203 inches. So we got Y1, we're almost there. We just need Y2. All right, so now we find Y2. Y2, we use the formula, um, that is Y, let's put Y2 is equal to that complicated formula. Um, we got, so for a circle, this is the equation you use, pi over four, radius to the fourth, bottom is the same, right? Y, C, A, and then made this a little too big and plus yc so yc again um is this distance from the center all the way to the surface along um along the surface here not the vertical vertical is only for forces so we know that was 203 um radius we know the area we know right from here um yeah so we should be good Let's go ahead and start plugging. Well, you know what? I didn't do it here, so let's just y2 is equal to pi over 4. 3 radius, right? Not the diameter. To the fourth over 203 inches times pi r squared plus 203. So if you do that, you will get y uh, 2 
is equal to 203.01 inches. And cool, we got that one. Wow, it's exactly on the center as well. So, okay, that's cool. I guess it's due to the geometry itself. It's not a huge, it's probably just a coincidence. It's not a shortcut, so don't think that this is, this is always the case. It's probably just due to the geometry of the of everything, pretty much. So let me move it up just in case you couldn't see it. Um, so we got force one y, um, and force two. We got y one, we got y two, and we are gonna take the moment about this point. Uh, there's a hinge, right? So there's an x and y component. Uh, let's put h y h x. And it's just point H. And let's take a moment about H. Um, we should be good. Positive orientation, right? Um, we got some of the moments about point H. Okay, so both of these are going to create positive moments, right? Because they're going counterclockwise. So F1 times 203 plus F2. 2 times 203. I'm just going to round it. It's actually this, but it's pretty much the same number. And then there's a reaction here. So there's a moment trying to hold the door shut. So that's going counterclockwise. I just assumed it, right? Makes sense. If you put it this way, you'll put positive here. If you move it that way, it'll rearrange itself. It doesn't really matter how you put it on your drawing. In this case, I know since these two are pushing that way, obviously this has to push this way. It's a negative because it's clockwise. So we're left with this equation right here. Plug in some numbers, move M to the other side. And then all this is equal to zero. Move M to the other side. We got 282.74 times 203. Plus F2, which is 124.32 times 203. Do the math, do all that good stuff. You get 1,221.46 pound times inch, pound inch. Or divide this by 12 to get the feet version, you get 101.79 pound, let me move it up in case you can't see, pound feet. So that is the answer to this problem. Um, so this is how much torque or moment is occurring here to keep these two, to keep the gate shut due to these two forces. So something to take from this problem, um, 10 PSI, this is acting all around on the walls of the tank, everywhere pretty much. So, and perpendicular too. So right there, like that. Um, this could be a midterm problem because it involves an angle. I'm pretty sure he's gonna give you an angle on the exam. So just uh, keep a lookout on that. Um, what else? Uh, just pretty much the trigonometry on this. Um, yeah, all this good stuff, you gotta know how to use uh, sine and cosine stuff to get your distances along here know when to use the vertical height this is vertical and then these are horizontal you gotta know which one um you gotta know which one's which pretty much uh what else i think that's it on this one so good luck if this one comes out